The Hasidim speak Yiddish, as they did in Poland and Russia. When I visited the school in Kiryat Sanj, it reminded me of my own childhood, when I heard my parents speaking Yiddish in our home. I still speak some Yiddish myself. The teaching methods in the yeshiva have not changed over the centuries. The students still discuss the Talmud in the traditional way. The Klausenburg rabbi died in 1994 and was succeeded by his son. I was invited to a tish, a gathering around the rabbi's table, a popular event among Hasidim, which is held every Shabbat and holiday. The rabbi teaches Torah, sometimes for hours. A tradition is observed that whatever the rabbi eats and whatever he touches is given out to the Hasidim. Something that was used either through a high spiritual person has a very high special value because he put in a lot of his spirit into it. And when I combine spiritually to it, it could help me out as well. I myself, when I do spiritual things, could also put some kind of spirit. But of course, the high spiritual person puts more of it into it. That's why on the weekends and the holidays, we gather together with the new Rebbe. He eats his meal and the leftovers, either he himself will send it to a certain person knowing that this person should get this piece or it'll just, the plate will just be hand over through the crowd and everyone is going to take off a bit. Another way of connection to the Rebbe. A friend of mine introduced me to her cousin in Kiryat Sanj. Sarah Ehrenfeld and her husband Yaakov have lived in this Hasidic neighborhood since its establishment. Years ago, Yaakov worked for the rabbi. Today, he is responsible for the neighborhood buildings. They invited me to join their Hanukkah celebrations, recalling the rededication of the ancient temple in Jerusalem by the Maccabees. I spoke with Grandmother Esther. She told me her impressive story. Her story is the story of Kiryat Sanj. Ganz allein. Ich habe das alles allein angefangen. Gott hat die Hoffnung. Und bis ich bin nach Hause gekommen bin, bin ich sehr krank geworden. Ich bin gewesen vielleicht fünf Monate in Spital in Jugoslawien, in Subotica. Von dort habe ich geheiratet, auf Senta. Und das hat mir Gott gegeben, die drei Kinder. Gott sei Dank, wie Sie sehen, habe ich jetzt vier Dorot hier. Mein Sohn, mein Sohns Kinder und die Kinder. 
Jakob and Sarah Ehrenfeld have seven children. Their daughter, Lea Rivka, is celebrating her last Chanukah as a single woman. She is about to marry. Her parents and the matchmaker had introduced her to her future husband. She had seen him only a few times before their wedding. I found myself in the middle of all the joy and tradition of a Hasidic wedding. The Klausenburg rabbi performed the ceremony, first inspecting the ring and then overseeing and witnessing the signing of the ketubah, the marriage contract. The wedding is like the Day of Atonement, on which all sins are forgiven. The couple fasts, and the bridegroom wears a white cloak. Ashes are placed on his forehead in memory of the destruction of the ancient temple in Jerusalem. Immediately after the ceremony, the couple goes to a secluded room to break their fast. This is the first time they are alone together. They allowed me to witness this very special moment. It's a very material part of life. It's the food, it's the, the music, it's the dancing. It's all material, but with a high spiritual meaning. When a, when a person gets married and he's happy, we gather around to help him out, to make bigger the happiness, in order to make the happiness of Hashem bigger, in order we should be able to accept more spiritual power and happiness through that.
After the wedding ceremony, the women joined the men in a family gathering. Through a symbolic partition, the bride dances with the man. This is called the mitzvah dance, a dance in honor of the bride. In Jerusalem, some Hasidic groups have their own neighborhoods. The Belts Hasidim live in a world unto itself, with its own religious institutions and even its own newspaper. Their synagogue is a copy of the one that stood in the village of Belts in Poland, which became a symbol of the Belts rabbi's dynasty. Today's Belts rabbi is one of Israel's foremost Hasidic sages. I visited with Yochevet and her family. They have been members of the Belts community for generations. I am now at 22. שידוך, נפגשנו ודיברנו וההורים ראו אותי, אחר כך דיברנו ולמוחרת התארסנו. זה החלי לשבת. זה הבחור הראשון שאני ראיתי, זה אבא שלי ראה אותו קודם, אנחנו, ההורים עושים את השידוך, לא אנחנו, אנחנו בעצם רק רואים את הבחור ו... בסוף אנחנו רואים את הבחור ואומרים שאם אנחנו רוצים או לא. אבל בדרך כלל אחר כך גומרים את השידור. אני סומכת על ההורים שלי. ההורים שלי רוצים שיהיה לי טוב. והם לקחו בחור ברוך השם מאוד טוב. ובגיל 18 אנחנו התחתנו. זהו, אני היום יש לי, יש לי תאומות גדולות. אחר כך יש לי בן ובת. יש לי ארבעה ילדים, ואנחנו גם חסידי בלז, בעלי לומד, חצי יום לומד, חצי יום הוא כותב מזוזות, סופר. התפקיד של האישה ביהדות בכלל. זה לגדל, להקים את הבית היהודי, לגדל אותם על התורה ולנהל את הבית. מקימים בית של תורה, רק תורה וחסידות. אנחנו לא מכירים את הדברים האחרים. זה לא קיים? זה באמת שאלה אישית, אני לא יכולה לענות לך על זה. זה יותר מדי אישי, וזה... אנחנו ברוך השם מקימים בתים יפים, ואנחנו חיים מאוד מאוד יפה בין הבעל לאישה. ברוך השם. יש את האהבה האמיתית. אני לא מכירה בכלל בחורים מבחוץ. בכלל לא מכירה בחורים ובחוץ. אנחנו נוהגים בכבוד, לא נוגעים אחד בשני, לא... לא מדברים עם גברים זרים בכלל. אנחנו מכירים רק את הבעל שלנו. כן. ככה אנחנו גדלים, אנחנו לא מכירים אחרת. אנחנו מודים להשם, שברוך השם, שגדלנו בכזה בית ואנחנו ממשיכים בכזה... אז אין לנו את הבעיות שיש לבתים המודרניים. אני לא יודעת בדיוק, אבל אני יודעת שיש שם הרבה יותר. 
bájott. Nézd meg, de maradt volna a mondani videók. אנחנו צנועות, אנחנו חיות בבית, אנחנו לא יוצאות, אנחנו מכירות רק את הבעל שלנו. זהו, אנחנו... זה, זה המצווה שלנו, ואנחנו שמחים על זה. אין לנו שאלות, מה שאנחנו קיבלנו מההורים שלנו, אנחנו ממשיכים. אנחנו רואים בשמחה, וזה טוב לנו כך. I was introduced to the editor of the Belt's newspaper and he took me along to a Hanukkah celebration among the Belt's Hasidim. During the holidays, Belt's Hasidim from all over the world come to Jerusalem to see their rabbi. Hasidim guard their extremely closed world from secular and modern influences. Most families have no radios, no televisions, or secular newspapers. Bells has its own newspaper. The editor receives me in his study in Jerusalem. The Bells community is a Hasidic community. But they will not the Judaism as always is given in thousand years back. Leben, ein jüdisch Leben, so wie die Vaters und Grandfathers haben gelebt in der neuen modernen Welt. Mit den neuen modernen Computers, mit den neuen modernen äh, Radios und Televisions, mit allen Sachen. Und leben so wie jedem gelebt vor 2000 Jahren, so wie die Gebieten von der Tora, was Gott hat gegeben vor 3000 Jahren. Und das ist richtig bis heute. Und man darf sein Aid in der modernen Welt, so wie man es gewinnt Aid vor tausend Jahren zurück. Und man kann das machen. Weil die einzige Welt, die, die Tragödie von dem jüdischen Volk ist, dass Menschen meinen, man kann nicht sein, kein Aid heint, als wenn es gewinnt vor 300 Jahren. Und das bringt zum Mordigen eine gefährliche Assimilation. Weil man hofft uns, sie gehen in die, in, die, in die fremde Welt, man geht daraus in die Universität und man heiratet nicht kein jüdische Kinder und, man, und, und es ist ein Ende zu dem jüdischen Volk. Und uns sagen, dass man muss gehen in den alten jüdischen Weg und man kann gehen in den alten jüdischen Weg und dass es glücklich zu gehen in den alten jüdischen Weg. Das ist der Hasidismus hat gesagt, dass zu sein Aid ist nicht schwer, dass es ist. Das ist, das ist, der, das ist der Baal Shem Tov. Erreicht. Er fliegt mit den Kindern in Heide und singen mit seinen Lieder und gehen im Wald und gucken, wie die Feigel äh, zifzen und die, in die Sonne scheint, scheint. Und jeder Sache hat er gesehen, die scheinen die guten Sachen von dem. Und, und hat gesehen, in die jüdischen Mitzwes, in die jüdischen Gebieten, eine Pflicht, was ist eine süße Pflicht und nicht keine schwere Pflicht. Das ist der Hasidismus. Belz ist keine politische Partei. Belz ist eine Gemeinde von Hasidus. Aber diese, diese Gemeinde, so wie so ein Marchot von Kashrut, so wie so eine Zeitung, so wie so ein alles Ding, hat sie auch Connections mit anderen Gemeinden, und auch mit der Regierung und auch mit der Bevölkerung von dem jüdischen Volk in der Welt. Der Belz darauf glaubt, dass das jüdische Volk wird nicht kennen, existieren in Israel, wenn er rum und rum ist, hunderte Millionen Muslimer, ob sie wollen nicht machen können, Peace, Shalom mit den mit der Schreinen, mit den Arabern und Shalom mit den anderen Schreinen, mit den anderen Neighborhood. Und, äh, und das ist die Policy, das ist der die Weg. A striking detail in Eichler's office caught my eye. A picture of him with Yitzhak Rabin, Israel's assassinated prime minister. I'd always thought the Hasidim rejected the modern state of Israel. They are anti-Zionists. In their worldview, no Jewish state should exist before the Messiah has come. Most Hasidim remain outside the political arguments over the return of land to the Palestinians for peace. Some Hasidic groups strongly oppose this idea. 
but the Belt's rabbi believes that saving lives is more important than land. The view from Belt is of jeder Stein in the Heilige Land is Heilig for uns. This is Hebron, this is Shem, this is Jerusalem, this is uh, all, all, ganz Earth Israel. But for peace, muss man das auch mal untergehen und sagen, Fahrfall, wir kennen nicht mehr äh, Stein fest, dass ob der Peace ist ein Messer Peace. In Rabin, was äh, er gewinnt bei einem Rabben, er hat gerade die Policy, er hat, er hat gesagt, dass er will bringen Peace, er will bringen Shalom, ein richtiger Shalom, nicht keine Illusion. During my discussions with Shaya, we also touched on the issue of Zionism and the state of Israel. I was brought up after the Holocaust with a firm belief in the necessity of the Jewish state. And I was puzzled how Shaya could reject the state of Israel. I live in the state of Israel. I go along as a citizen according to the laws of Israel but I don't have anything ideological in common with it. Zionism said that instead of being a Jew with the Torah, you can be a Jew with your land, and that is enough. We say no, our Judaism is our Torah. If the Torah says that our only right on Israel is keeping the Torah, you can't put a state that comes to take the place of the Torah. My journey into the world of Hasidism took me to many places throughout Israel, including a village not far from the international airport. This is Kfar Chabad, the center of the Lubavitch Hasidim. They are among the largest Hasidic groups in the world. Though the Lubavitch rabbi never visited Israel, I could see his presence everywhere. Since shortly before his death in 1994, some of his followers have adopted the fervent and, for many, controversial belief that the rabbi is the Messiah. A copy of the Lubavitch headquarters in Brooklyn was built in Kfar Chabad, waiting for the time the Messiah would come. The word Chabad itself means uh, intellect. So our belief is that by means of intellect as a Jew will be a much better Jew. The difference between Chabad and all the others is that, that Chabad wants every Jew to feel the soul all the time. And not just on uh, unusual things like, uh, God forbid, when somebody dies or when somebody's very happy. Or just like they say, I'm a good Jew in my heart, but to feel a good Jew in their whole hands, that their arms should be happy and their hands should be happy and that their mouth should be happy and their legs should be happy. Everything could be, should be filled with Judaism. I visited Kfar Chabad shortly before Passover. In the bakery I saw how they make hand-baked matzos, the special unleavened bread that symbolizes the exodus from Egypt. My visit was quite symbolic as Passover is the festival of freedom, commemorating the redemption of the Israelite slaves from Egypt and pointing ahead to the final redemption of the world in the age of the Messiah. All of Kabbalah, from its very beginning, all of Kabbalah and Hasidism is a messianic vision and is a power within the Jewish people and the Jewish tradition to bring about closer and closer the redemption of the world. All of Kabbalah is an answer to the deepest desire of the people to witness and experience divinity, which in itself is redemption. I decided to spend the happy festival of Purim in Bnei Brak and in Jerusalem to meet the friends I made during this journey. I went first to the synagogue of the Spinker Rabbi to hear him read the Purim story from the scroll of Esther. It's a tradition to dress up in costumes 
to celebrate the salvation of the Jews of ancient Persia. At the rabbi's home, the Purim atmosphere reached an absolute spiritual height. During the Tish, I could feel an atmosphere I had only experienced a few times during my Hasidic journey. I found the same Purim holiday spirit in the air when I returned to Mea Sherim in Jerusalem. During the two years it took me to make this film, I made many friends in a community I'd barely known before. I learned much from the Hasidim. They showed me a different way to look at our daily lives, a way in which we seek and find a deeper meaning in even the most mundane affairs. I found myself inspired and perhaps even a little envious. From the spiritual confines of my own secular lifestyle, it was difficult for me to relate to such devotion. But I couldn't escape the sense of warmth that penetrated me as I gained a new insight into the community from which my own family descends. The journey into the world of my father brought me in a mysterious way to Shaya. Was it a miracle? Shaya taught me that in Hasidic belief miracles do exist. But our encounter, he said, was no miracle. It was merely the hand of God showing us the way. Oh 